Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today I'd like to introduce you to a brand that we've carried for about two years, a little over two years, I think it was the end of 2014 that we pulled it in. A uh, brand is called Techni. Techni makes pilot's watches that have kind of a modern flair, if you will. You know, aviation watches have been the same for, I don't know, 70, 80 years, and they haven't changed much. And I know today people really still dig the old style dials, and that's what they look for, like when they buy a Laco from us or, you know, one of those other vintage type of Fliegers. And what Techni does is they bring something a little bit new to the table, some more design stylings, uh, a little more of a modernistic approach to the Pilot's Watch. So I have a couple here. I have five that I want to show you. And, you know, they just really look cool. Uh, here's like a Quartz Harrier is the GMT model. Um, you know, all priced affordably, you know, 100 200 you know, up to 400 for an auto. So they're really nice watches. You know, what struck me about Techni from the beginning was the complete honesty. When I first went through their literature to look at the brand, they've got a little disclaimer at the bottom, if you want to call it a disclaimer, and it says designed in Switzerland, manufactured in Hong Kong or mainland China. And I was like, wow, this is really great because you know, when I first got into this business, I don't know, uh, 13 years ago or so, we carried brands that tried to pretend they were from Germany, but they really weren't. And then the internet dubbed them uh, Germasian, which was a great term, and it still sticks around today. Uh, I hated that, and whenever people asked me, is this a made in Germany watch for $130, I would tell them, absolutely not. The company is located in Germany, but they're making watches, you know, in China. So Techni here, he's telling you from the get-go, you know, my watches are designed in Switzerland. I'm not making them here. I'm making them somewhere else. Uh, it doesn't take anything away from the watch. I mean, if you want a Swiss-made watch, then this isn't the watch for you. If you want an affordable, good-looking watch, then maybe this is the watch for you. But just for, for me as a seller, that hit home that the guy's honest, and I love dealing with honest people. Uh, there's a ton of shysters in this business, and I only like to deal with good people. So we'll get over to the table and take a look. But first, got to do the obligatory wrist check. Uh, so for those of you that say... Small wristed guys shouldn't wear tremendous watches. Well, here you go. This is my 47 millimeter Rougeois XL skeleton. Uh, it does look like a wall clock on my wrist. A um, little flavor flavor, I guess, but I love the watch. I do wear it. Uh, it looks good, in my opinion. And then uh, a reactor. Uh, I don't even know what this is called, to tell you the truth. It's got a 10 year battery in it, and I've had it for a few years, so I've got about seven or eight years left before I have to replace it. Very comfortable, looks great, it's blue, which, you know, I guess that checks the boxes for me. So anyway, let's go uh, take a look at Techni watches and see what they're all about. In front of you here, I've got two different Techni watches, one from the Merlin collection and one from the Harrier collection. I've got five watches in total to show you. Two of them are Merlins and then three of them are Harriers. There's going to be one automatic introduced at the end. And this is a good representation of the watches. They come in different straps and different case colors between the Merlin and the Harrier. And there's other styles that are currently out of production, and we're hoping that Techni will make them again you know, in, in the coming months or year. But they seem to have focused this year mostly on the quartz models, since that is what's popular you know, worldwide. Of course, you know, my store is a bit different, and we focus more on automatics, but I just thought these quartz watches are really cool. They're inexpensive, and it's a new take on the classic aviation watch, in my opinion. So I'm going to start with the Merlin, and we'll put the Harrier on the side for later. So this is the Techni Merlin. You can see it's got this nice black dial, domed mineral crystal, running seconds at the bottom in that sub-dial. It's got these nice stylized hour and minute hands, and they follow it through to the seconds hand. Brushed case, stainless steel, 316L. And then on the back, they have all the information. Technip Principio, the reference number, it's the Merlin. And this is what I was saying before. I really like this. Designed in Switzerland. It's not saying made in Switzerland. It's designed in Switzerland. It's got a Japanese movement or Japan movement stainless steel, and then the ISO rating for the water resistance of 50 meters. It even has a serial number on the back that you can see. I mean, I don't want to rip the sticker off as this is a stock piece. And at the top, we kind of have the Principio motto. Ours, I excuse my pronunciation, ours longa vita brevis, art is long, life is short. 
So the watch comes on this nice brown leather strap, uh, this light brown. It comes in a bunch of different varieties, and I'll show you another one in a minute on a nylon strap. It's got a signed buckle. This is reference number 246.053, and 246 tells you it's a Merlin, and then the rest of it after the dot is basically the strap type. Uh, it is around 39 and a half or 40 millimeters in diameter, 11 millimeters thick, and then that tip-to-tip -tip dimension right here, that is 47 millimeters. This watch comes in at around 115 or so dollars, depending on exchange rates. It's got a 20 millimeter lug, so if you want to change the strap to something else, you know, 20 millimeters is one of the most popular sizes out there. You could probably do whatever you want uh, as far as a strap. You want to put on a different leather, you want to put it on a different nylon, you want to put it on a rubber, you know, you, know, you can do it all. Uh, so we'll now move on to the NATO strap version. So here is the NATO strap version. Now you're looking at the same exact watch, same exact specs. The price is a little less since it's a, you know, that one piece nylon strap. So around $100 for this piece. Uh, but it's got all the same design elements. The brushed stainless steel case, the dome mineral crystal. It's got the same size, same case back markings, nice onion crown, push pull. I should have mentioned that it is push pull. It's not screw down as you would expect in a 50 meter water resistant watch. We will get up close on the dial now and you can see it's got that Japan movement written on it. The hands are treated with luminescence so you can see I'll flip out the lights and you can see it does glow quite well. You can see the hands, the hands are certainly prominent and then the indices are loomed not as much so you can you can easily read the time and you can see the seconds hand ticking away. So this is the second style of the Techno Merlin and also the dials also say Principio I and mean, sometimes it does get a bit confusing. I will admit the brand confuses me sometimes um, <laughs> with their reference numbers. You know, it's not a very conventional way to do reference numbers um, but I guess it works for them so we just stick with it. So now I'm going to move on to the Harrier watches. So next we move up to the Harrier line. So this is the Techno Harrier. This is one of the three Harriers I'm going to show you. It's another quartz runs on a quartz movement. I believe this one runs on a Ronda movement. It's got this nice brown leather strap, which is really thick. It's got this black polymer case. It's like a plastic. It's not metal for sure, um, but it's got a nice feel to it, and it certainly is lightweight. Nice signed buckle, a matching buckle at that. It retains the push-pull crown. 20 millimeter lugs. Now size, it's going to be 42 millimeters from here to here, around 11 millimeters thick. And your tip to tip is going to be 51 millimeters. Quick look at the solid screw down case back. It's got all the similar markings that you saw before, but now we've upgraded to a sapphire crystal. So it's going to be a scratch resistant sapphire crystal on the front, which is a nice upgrade and something that you generally don't see, I would say, in this price point at $179 or so. Like the Merlin, it's got nice loom on it. I'll flip out the lights. And you can easily see how the watch glows. And the, the seconds hand really looks nice. They do a nice job with their luminescence. And you see the two dots at the 12 for orientation. If the 12 wasn't enough for you, although it should be. Uh, this does have a flat crystal. In case I didn't say that, it's the flat sapphire. So then they take the Harrier model. And then we do a little bit of an upgrade to the movement. And it's amazing what the watch can become. Here I've got the next one up. This is model number 368.174. I should have mentioned before, I'm sorry. This is model 367.172. So now this is a Harrier again, but we've swapped for an upgraded two time zone movement or a GMT movement, and they added that nice lime green hand to tell you, you down there at the bottom, see it says UTC, Universal UTC stands for Universal Coordinated Time. I'll never understand why the T comes before the C. It would then be Universal Time Coordinated, but that doesn't make sense. I don't know, maybe UCT doesn't sound right. Who knows? Anyway, UTC, so you can set that hand. I can pull out the crown one click, and you can set that hand wherever you want, pointing to the 24-hour scale on the outside. That hand will rotate once a day, so it will keep a second time zone. It will keep track of a second time zone for you. We retain the same kind of a case, same size, same lug. The strap changed a bit to this. They call it a sand, but it actually has like a, a greenish kind of tinge to it, which I really dig because it picks up the uh, 
the GMT hand, still a signed buckle, the sapphire crystal, if I didn't say it already, again, all the same specs, same water resistance, you know, it's the same case, they basically just dropped in a new dial and a new movement. And this one comes in, again, just under $200, around $199. So here's the last Harrier we're going to look at. This is an automatic, and it is powered by the Miyota 9015. So no low-cost movement here. This is a top-quality Japanese movement. This is a movement that a lot of people are using now. You know, Junkers uses it. Zeppelin uses it. Uh, the new brand Hemel that we carry uses it. And all of them... You know, all of them market around the same price point, you know, around $400. So this is a around a $400 watch, uh, but it's going to retain most of the same size specs that we discussed. This time we're trading in the polymer case for this brushed stainless steel case. Uh, like I said, it does run on the Miyota 9015, so you can see it's an automatic movement, so it runs by the, mo by the motion of your wrist. And also is hand-windable, which is great. It's a 24 joule movement and hackable. So when you pull out the crown to set the time, watch the seconds hand. The seconds hand stops, so you can really precisely set the time. As you can see, it's got a date. It retains a very similar dial to the first Harrier I showed you. Some markings are different to tell you now that this is an automatic, but it's very similar indeed. It's got those nice hands. It's got luminescence on it, uh, and it's still an anti-reflective sapphire crystal. So I have all the techniques. This is the one that gives the automatic pilot's watch a real run for the money because it's got great parts to it. It's got an excellent movement. It's got good looks. You know, it's a great take on a classic watch. You know, the, the pilot's watch is kind of boring. And this really, you know, kind of livens it up a bit. The dial itself has depth. Yeah, it's got nice little design elements, little things from cockpit gauges that really just, you know, shine a bit. And as, as I... As I had mentioned in the opening monologue, you know, one of the things I liked about the brand from the beginning was the honesty. And, you know, in, in the back of the screenshot, I have the instruction manual. And it's actually very well written. And it's actually pretty cool looking. It's, you know, this vintage kind of paper feel to a brown paper. And it's printed almost, you know, almost like newsprint. It's pretty cool looking. All sorts of pictures and diagrams. But what I dug about it from the beginning was on the warranty card... Actually, I have a little statement at the bottom. You know, it's signed by Francis. It has a little statement at the bottom that it's designed in Switzerland and it's manufactured, you know, it's basically made in China. Whether it be Hong Kong or mainland China, it's made in China. Uh, and there's no deception about it. They never say it's a Swiss made watch. They never say it's a Swiss watch to try to kind of fool you. Uh, so they really are honest about it. And I kind of dig that. And I really like it. I really like where that comes from because it is the way I run my own company. You know, I don't want to deceive anybody. So since they all pretty much are the same case size, I'll just do one from each style. This is the Harrier at 41 millimeters, 51-ish uh, tip to tip. Fits my 6 and 3 quarter inch wrist fine. I'm not near the end of the strap, but I'm not near the beginning of the strap. It looks great. It feels very comfortable. Not that it's a lightweight watch, but you don't really feel like anything's there. It's just a stainless steel case on a leather strap. And then here is the slightly smaller Merlin. I mean, I'm no fashionista. I just love the way that the light brownish, that reddish kind of light brown works with the black dial. And of course, this watch is nowhere near being too small for me. It's actually a perfect size. Would wear it without a problem. So this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you a couple of, uh, showing you a few Techni watches, mostly the Merlin and the Harrier. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to our channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments or want to share anything, please feel free to put it down below. And we'll be sure to address it as soon as we can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.